Hello everyone and welcome to PC Games on Consoles where we take a look at games that are primarily PC games and find out how good they are on consoles. Now today we are taking a look at Killing Floor 2 on the PS4. So Killing Floor was a PC franchise that had an original release in 2009. It was a co-op based zombie horde mode survival first person shooter. That's the best, that's the best description I could come up with. Uh, it started out as a Unreal Tournament 2004 mod. I think it was released in 2005. It did get a standalone release in 2009. And Killing Floor 2 is naturally the sequel to Killing Floor which released into Early Access on PC in April of 2015. The full release then followed 18 months later in November 2016 for both PlayStation 4 and PC at the same time. So we're going to take a look at how the PS4 version compares to the PC version. Well, it tries to get there but it doesn't quite make it. Killing Floor 2 targets 60 FPS which is admirable and is appropriate for the type of game that it is. It is a kind of fast paced uh, shooter uh, but the truth is that the PS4 just isn't capable of maintaining it especially when the screen is filled with Zeds which is what the game calls zombies and there are six player characters. It is a six player co-op game, six players in the game. It averages frame rates between sort of 40 to 60. It stays in the 50s a lot of the time. The biggest problem with it is that the frame rate is constantly fluctuating. So the frame pace, the frame pacing is uneven, making the performance sketchy. So you're looking at a 20 FPS swing. You get dips to the late, low, as low as the upper 30s and you can get 60 FPS occasionally. You'll get 60 FPS. The problem is that you would rather have a consistent frame rate rather than one that's constantly changing. It's always better to have a consistent frame rate than a high frame rate. Okay, the base PS4 runs the game at 1080p and the PS4 Pro runs it at 1800p. Uh, both target and fail to hit 60 FPS. They're both kind of similar in terms of their performance. The only real difference is the resolution, uh, which to me suggests the game is more CPU bound rather than GPU bound as decreasing the resolution probably won't give you the performance of your CPU bound because why would you run it 1080p and not quite 60 FPS? when you could probably lower it to 900p and maybe get 60 fps. If you're CPU bound, lowering the resolution will not help in that sense. There is a lot of players on screen in terms of six players, Left for Dead, which is it's kind of like in Call of Duty uh, Zombies. Uh, they only have four player support, so having six players on the screen and a lot of Zeds on the screen um, does have that. The PS4 Pro though has no option to run it at 1080p. It only, it will, if you run it at 1080p it will only downsample from 1800p so you'll get super sampling uh, on the PS4 Pro. Uh, so maybe getting around the problem, fewer players, reduce it from 6 to 4, less Z, spawn, Z spawning but I mean I'm guessing they just went for the straight PC port rather than redesign it because of course the game would have to be rebalanced. It is balanced around there being six players uh, instead of four. Maybe reducing it to four would reduce CPU load. Again, it's less players to keep track of. And again, having less Z spawning in means less uh, less draw calls, less animation, less AI, different types of Zs in the game as well. Uh, it's not just uh, your uh, just your regular. You get just your regular fodder zombies, and you've got like your super zombies, and then you've got the boss character that spawns in at the last part. But overall, it's not a it's not a bad port. But the frame rate is an issue. The game looks pretty good as well. Uh, it runs the equivalent of the PC at medium settings. Uh, the lighting effects are really nice. Uh, the textures are, I would say, medium. Around the sort of PC's medium quality. 
there uh even on the ps4 pro the only difference again is the resolution there's no sort of improvements to the shadow quality or anything like that or texture quality it's just a resolution one runs at 1080p one runs at 1800p that's the only real difference but other than that the port is not so bad it is inferior to the pc port though It works pretty well, as the PC version has controller support, so button mapping works as you would expect. Uh, the only real issues with it are when you have more than two weapons, switching between them takes longer. Um, it's done with the triangle button, uh, which can be pressed to cycle through weapons, or you can hold the button down to bring up a menu and select your weapons with the D-pad. Otherwise, it's fine. Of course, you've got the aim assist uh, for aim down sights uh, support. You've got that there as well. Um, it works fine for healing. You've got buttons that do sort of multiple things, like square, for example, is the reload button. Or if you hold the square button, you'll inject yourself with a little healing injector. But yeah, navigating through the menus, going through everything, is done fairly fairly straightforward with the controller. Uh, mouse and keyboard is obviously the superior way to play, but if you're playing, you can play on the PC with a controller, and I've played it on the PC with a controller and had no real issues with it. It does work out pretty fine. I mean, having the PC version with controller support certainly has helped them out, and, you know, it's not a hugely complex game. It's just a first-person shooter, so... You know, there's plenty of them on consoles, so controller is a viable way to play, I would say. Not as good as mouse and keyboard, but certainly not unplayable in any way. If you have the choice of PC or PS4 version, then get the PC version. It is the superior version. Again, you can get a more consistent frame rate out of the PC version and you've got I think one of the biggest things that I found with it is that the amount of people playing it on PS4 is a lot less it took longer to find games on PS4 now I'm recording this in July of 2017 and Killing Floor 2 was available uh, in June as the uh, PlayStation Plus subscription game the free game if you will uh put free in inverted commas there it's not technically free you're paying a subscription for it so as a playstation plus subscription game it was included for free in the month of june now i was playing it in sort of late june of 2017 most of the footage is from late june early july so it was still on it went or oh, it went off playstation plus it was the 4th of july as i record this on the 5th so it was, you know, I'd imagine peak player base would have been around June time. Uh, so, struggled to find a game, really. Uh, you had to wait quite a while. I uh, had to play sort of normal, tried normal, very few people playing on normal. had to play on hard mode uh, to get a game, uh, really. Uh, PC, it's quicker to find a game. Again, it is mostly a PC franchise, so this is to be expected but just bear that in mind if you're going to buy the ps4 version that you can still find the game you still get a game eventually but it just takes longer to get it so i'm imagining there's less people playing it again on pc the game has been out longer it was released into early access in april of 2015 and the franchise of course has been around since 2005 when it started out as a mod on pc so it does have history on pc rather than on PS4, so maybe that can attribute for it. The PC version also supports things like Steam Workshop support is available for the PC version, so you can get mods for it via Steam Workshop. Uh, but the PS4 version, if you don't have a choice, if you have a PS4 and you're looking for a co-op zombie shooter, then it's not a bad buy, actually. It's not bad. I would recommend picking it up if you own a PlayStation 4. It certainly is worth your while and if you picked it up as part of the um, the June PlayStation Plus rewards then you know it's not a bad game to get in there uh, quite a good one actually uh, considering PlayStation Plus can be a bit hit or miss shall we say 
for its uh, included monthly games. But this one, pretty decent actually, not a bad game. Uh, the only issue you'd have with the PS4 version really is again lack of players and the frame rate is the issue. It's not a major issue, it doesn't make the game unplayable. I mean there's nothing about it that says, oh my god, don't play this, it's a piece of shit. There's nothing there that suggests that. It's still an enjoyable experience and I enjoyed my time with the PS4 version. That being said, if I had a choice, if I had two versions put in front of me that says, which one would you recommend over the other? Definitely 100% the PC version. It's just a better version. Again, depending on your PC setup, again, you can always lower graphical settings and things to get the frame rate that you want. 60 FPS consistent is fairly straightforward to do. My R9 390X managed to get it. So if you've got an RX 480 or a GTX 10, 60, no, I said 1070. I've got a 1070 now. Uh, 1440p 60 FPS is not really an issue on the 1070. Uh, but yeah, you can usually get 1080p 60 FPS. Certainly a more consistent frame rate than the PlayStation 4 version. PS4 Pro, it's disappointing on PS4 Pro, but most games are disappointing on PS4 Pro, I find. Uh, that's the biggest thing. Again, doesn't offer you that more consistent frame rate. It just offers a higher resolution, which fine, it does look better. Of course it does look better, but um, again, you want that frame rate. It's a game that, you know, it's a fast-paced uh, shooting game. You want smooth, consistent 60 FPS. Okay, rather than a fluctuating frame rate. Uh, it's a pity that it doesn't run at 1080p. Again, that to me suggests the issues are CPU issues rather than GPU. Because again, the nature of the game. But overall, it's a game that I would recommend that you pick up. Uh, you could have got it uh, as part of PlayStation Plus in the month of June. Uh, you can buy it on PlayStation 4 as well. It does cost more than it does on PC. I've seen it around. The very, there is a boxed copy of them available. I saw one in CEX, it was £25 for it pre-owned, which is way more than the PC version. Steam sale, it was £9.99 uh, for Killing Floor 2, which is pretty decent actually for the type of game that it is. Uh, of course it's been available for, you know, it's been available, I think it's £14.99 it is normally on PC. I don't have the pricing uh, for PlayStation 4 because I have, I only got it on PlayStation Plus, it just says owned now in the library, so I don't have pricing for it, so I don't know how much it costs you, but again, it's uh, fairly cheap to buy on PC. PS4, you're going to pay a little bit more, but there you go, that was Killing Floor 2, a game I would say, despite its flaws on PS4, is still worth your while playing. But anyway, that is all for this video, so thank you for joining me, and we'll see you again soon, and goodbye.